Hi guys, welcome to my channel Vinyl Beauty or welcome back. I'm Debbie if you don't know me. For today's video I'm super excited, we've got a new palette to play with. So I've picked up the Creepy Cute 2 from Shroud Cosmetics. I've already got the original Creepy Cute from Strobe as it was then and that's one of my favourites in my entire collection. So I've got real high hopes for this one and as soon as I saw they were bringing out a Creepy Cute 2 just knew I had to get it. So if you want to see the palettes side by side, I'm not going to swatch them but I'll just show you them side by side and if you want to see what look I'm going to create which is going to be just using this palette so it'll be an all matte look. So if you want to see that please keep on watching okay so let's have a look at the creepy cute 2 up close then so beautiful artwork it's got very similar artwork to the creepy cute we'll have a look at them together in a second but that's one of the things that attracts me I just love the artwork on these I think it's really really nice and it's a, a smaller size you'll see that in a moment when I compare the two but that's not necessarily a bad thing so that's the shades inside, so it's a bit more of a rainbow palette I would say than the Creepy Cute, a little bit more saturated, not so much pastel, a little bit more as I say rainbow but still on the pastel side and I'm going to hold them up together so that you can see. So there we go, so that's the original Creepy Cute and what I love so much about the original was that it got a black and a grey so it made it really versatile for Halloween looks while still being a really great pastel palette and the shade, what was it called, Cold Shoulder, yeah this blue is just incredible, it's the best pastel I've ever come across. As you can see when I hold these up together, the shades in the Creepy Cute 2 are a lot more saturated in tone, a lot deeper but without being too deep, I mean, they're definitely pastel, they're summer kind of colours. So, yeah, I'm quite excited to use it, but there's no depth as such. Whereas you've got the black and the grey to really build some depth with those pastels with the, the Creepy Cute. But I think together as companions to one another, which is probably how I will use them, I'm really happy to have like an extension of the shades, but in the same format. They've changed the formula apparently and so that concerns me a bit because I like the formula of the original but apparently it's meant to be better so we'll we'll see that but as I say it's quite a bit smaller so I don't know if you could see that when I was holding them up how I was doing it just then but if I hold them up like that that's the creepy cute too so you can see it's quite a bit smaller but still has a comparable amount of product I think I think they've just done away with the empty space as such but the amount of product never worries me, I never get through an eyeshadow anyway. So for today's look, what I want to do is kind of echo the colours that are in my top. I've got some kind of mint green, I've got turquoise and I've got some purple in here. So we're literally going to use these shades. We're going to go up, down, up, like that. So we're going to use the Switch Babe, which is the blue, Get Lost, Alien Queen and Paws Off. Now normally I would always go for the red first and try that out in a palette, but yeah, just feeling doing something purple, green and blue today. So that's what we're going to do. So because they're on the pastel side and because I love this as a primer for everything really, I'm going to be using the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk as my primer. I'll put that pretty much everywhere. And I'm not going to do a cut crease. Quite often when I do a all matte look, I tend to to do a cut crease to get as many colours on my eyes as possible. But I've decided not to do that today because sometimes I think I do try to put too many colours on my eyes so I want it to be a cohesive look that kind of matches what I'm wearing so how have you guys been if you're from the UK if you've been loving the gorgeous weather we had today's Sunday and yesterday oh it was just beautiful it was like 22 23 not a cloud in the sky we had a barbecue yesterday and it really got me thinking about holidays and we've booked some holidays I'm super excited I think the last time I spoke to you guys was probably about a week ago and we decided to book a holiday to Rhodes and we're going there in September of this year but since then I've booked two more <laughs> so making up for lost time because life's short and you've got to cram in all these experiences I think so we're going to Gran Canaria next June for 11 nights and we're going to 
Crete in the September. So really excited. So I wanted to do something sort of holiday-ish and I always wear this top when I go on holiday. I've had this for years. All right, so I think what I want to do is get some depth in my lower lash line. So I'm going to use the black liner that I'm going to use for that as kind of a base. You guys know me, I don't want things too pastel. So I'm going to use Black Core by LH Cosmetics. Doesn't matter what pencil you use, I just like this one. Put that in my waterline and sort of slightly onto my lower lash line. It always seems weird starting with the under pencil, but sometimes I find it easier then because I can blend it onto my lower lash line as well and use it as a base for the shadows and kind of deepen things up a little bit. So I suppose it's cheating because there's no black in the palette. I need to have a 303. It's a great brush for blending out on the lower lash line particularly for pencil like this. So just wanted a bit of smudgy black depth on the lower lash line to then put the colour over the top. So I don't want it too, too black. But. So I'm going to start with the shade Get Lost. So this minty green here. And that's going on the inner part of my crease here. I'm just going to pack that on. Quite kick up and powdery in the pan. Quite light shadows like that though. I'll just go back in and mop up what's kicked up and use it that way so you don't waste any but I find they're quite often more saturated when they're a bit kick up -y, so definitely my preference and having to really scrape a shadow to get some onto the brush I prefer it to be a little bit kick up -y, as long as there's not too much fall down and there isn't with this one so I want to go about halfway across with that get lost shade. I want to make this a fairly easy look to create. So all I'm doing as I say is just pretty much packing and then just slightly swirling as I go. Really nothing too complicated at all. And as I say we're not going to do anything like cut creases because I don't think the majority of people do that when they're doing eyeshadow for themselves. A lot of the time I don't have time for that kind of thing myself, so... You can make all these amazing looks by doing all these cut creases, but who's got the time to spend an hour on their eyeshadow in the morning, you know? Well, that's a good start, because that's... I'd say it's a little bit stronger than a pastel, but still on the light side. Morphe M506, I've been using these for a while, and the shade Alien Queen, so we're going to use that one now. I love a kind of teal shade like this, so I think that's going to look super pretty. It's a bit more blue than I expected it to kind of look on the eyes, but that's okay. Might not need the switchblade shade, but we'll see. I really like that shade. So I'm going to bring it round in a circle shape, kind of match up where we've where we've already put that base shade down of that pencil. So just going in a circle like that, and it's really blending easily. It's blending itself. I'm terrible at blending, and these are blending really nicely. I love the shroud formula though. I think this palette could be going on holiday with me. I don't tend to do particularly colourful looks on holiday though. I tend to just do neutrals, but like with that blue or green kind of sparkly lower lash line, something really quick and easy because I don't want to be spending a lot of time doing makeup when you're on holiday, do you? That's really striking though, isn't it? That's beautiful. I think I'm going to bring that Alien Queen down onto the lower lash line to about halfway and I'm just keeping with that same brush. And because we put the black down first it's giving it just that little bit more depth. Because I'm going to put a wing through this look as well because that's what I do mostly. 
think I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to use Get Lost that I used here and just wrap it around my lower lash line. And then I think what we'll do is we'll have a switchblade on the outer part of my lid and we'll go in with pores off on the inner part. So just pressing the switchblade on in the outer corner. They're going on nicely there, quite opaque from the get go. And then just pause off on the inner part, just pretty much just pressing that on. That's a beautiful shade. Lovely sort of lilac y purple tones. Just where it meets up with that green shade in the crease, I'm just kind of Blending it a little bit together because as I say I don't want it to really be a cut crease. It's gonna go black in with switch blade just to re-intensify that corner. I think we've lost a little bit of that in the process. And it's such a pretty blue actually. Alright, that was super easy. Just going to just soften the edges now where we've laid down that teal shade. Okay, I think that's it for the eyeshadow. So I'm just going to pop off camera for wing liner, mascara and a lip. And I'll be back with you with the finished look. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. Finished it off with Illamasqua's gel liner. My favourite at the moment. Much preferring that to doing a liquid wing liner. Would you guys like to see a tutorial how I do my wing liner with gel liner? particularly on old wrinkly eyes like mine because I can do a bit of a tutorial on it I think and it might be useful for some of you so drop a comment if you want to see that because it might also be useful if you've got slightly hooded eyes as well because I never thought I could use gel liner on my eyes and I've found a way to do it so so yeah let me know if you want to see that but I finished it off as well with Melt Supernatural Mascara, another awesome product that I've been enjoying a lot. And then for lips, I've gone in with an oldie but goodie. This is a lip ammunition from Jeffree Star. I love this one. I've never been able to find a colour quite like it. It's the shade Popsicle Dream. And I think it's just the perfect colour to match with that lilac that's on my lids. This was such an easy one to create and it's not often I do an all matte look. But yeah, I really love how it's turned out actually. So the Creepy Cute 2 then, what do I think of it? Well, if you've got the Creepy Cute 1 or Creepy Cute, do you need this one? Not necessarily. I mean, you've probably got a lot of pastels in that one, but this is a lot more saturated. I think it's pastels for people that don't like pastels like me. <laughs> like it's a lot more, as I say, saturated, but still not a primary colour or like a rainbow colour. It has still got a pastel vibe to it, but just more intense. And I think as a shade extension to the original, it's perfect as well. So if you've already got the Creepy Cute, you wouldn't be wasting your money getting this one because the shades are different enough, I think. Okay, and that's them together. You can see that it's a lot lighter in tone in the original Creepy Cute. So you've got a lot more scope to kind of go a little bit deeper. Uh, certainly not dual toned or rainbow, but a, a little bit more intense with the, the Creepy Cute too. But I think having the Creepy Cute one as well, between them, you can create a lot of looks. So, yeah, don't think it's a waste of money at all to, to get both if they appeal to you. In terms of the formula, I don't notice a great deal of difference. They're, they're both quite kick up -y formulas, but I think in the Creepy Cute 2, there's a lot less fallout. So I think that's great. I mean, I didn't notice any, and they're quite intense colours, as I say. I've got no specks of blue or green or anything on my cheeks, but they were quite kick in the pan. But I was packing them on rather than, you know, blending as I go as well. And normally I do get a bit of fallout when I do that. So, yeah, I'm impressed with this. I think it's really great. But then I always am with Shroud Cosmetics. I think they don't bring out too many products and they put their heart and soul into what they do. They seem to have short, sorted out the shipping situation. I mean, like for Betty Jean's palette, Butte Bean or Batty Bean as she is now, the wait time on that was ridiculous. And I think they were just taken so much by surprise with the popularity of that. They've sorted that out, but this still took, I don't know, about two weeks before I got that shipping notification. And then it came pretty quickly after that, but I'm used to waiting to get things from the, the States to the UK in any case. But it's one of the brands that I'm prepared to pay the shipping for and to wait for because I just enjoy the quality so much. And I don't feel overwhelmed with release after release. You know, it feels like what they bring out really adds to their line. And, you know, 
as I say, it's just not overwhelming. It, it's like, you know, one or two products a year, which when they do bring something out, it's kind of an event and I really want to own it, if that makes sense. Got some of their uh, shimmers as well, the singles that they've brought out. I've got their Divinity palette and their Arcana palette, so, and the, the Batty Bean palette, the It's Freaking Bat. So I've got a, a good knowledge of what their palettes are all about. And yeah, really, really happy with this one. If you're curious, it might be interesting to see the It's Freaking Bats against the, the Creepy Cute 2 as I own them both. So I'll show you that as well. I'll try to. Terrified of dropping these palettes on the floor. That would not make my day. But you've got some of the same teal shades in there, but not too much crossover between the two. So if you own the It's Freaking Bats, I think... Yeah, it's definitely way different enough to make the purchase of the Creepy Cute 2 worthwhile. Yes, yeah, I had a lot of fun playing with this. I think I need to try out that shortcake shade though. Whenever there's a red in a palette, I need to try it out. So I'll be doing that soon. And I think what I might do is combine some of my single shimmers I've got from the brand with the other colours that I've not used. So the shortcake shade, safe word, tough guy and banana milk. I've not used any of those. So obviously I can only comment on the, the four shades I've used, but yeah, really impressed so far. So you'll have to let me know. Have you picked this one up guys? Have you got the original creepy cute? I'd love to know as well. Are you into pastels or are they not really your thing? Or yeah, what's your vibe for summer makeup? I'm interested to know. Let's chat about it down in the comments, but Thank you so much for watching this one. If you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you might consider subscribing before you go. But other than that, guys, hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.